Okay, I'm shooting some video of my solar setup now with my 24 panel setup. Up here I've got two rows of seven for 14 panels. Um, 10 of these are these sharp panels that I bought. I think they were around 195 bucks a piece, 230 watts. So you can, you can see this row here, these, these seven are all the sharp panels. And then the first three down there are the sharp panels. And these four, these last four here, are the panels that I made. And when I added up what it cost me to make them, that took $335. So obviously it's cheaper to buy panels than to make them. And this thing here, right here, is my, uh, my solar tracker that uh, turns these panels. It follows the sun during the day. And, uh, and the wiring's a little crude here, but I did have a different tracking system and that I made myself with a small DC motor gearbox, but the motor brushes kept wearing out and I got sick of messing around with it. And uh, finally I went to these lineal actuators here. Um, this is the smaller one. I've also got one over here on the house. On this setup over here, this is my other 10 270 watt panels. Those are LG panels. Um, originally I was going to set that up to, to move like these, but because I didn't have enough space to space them far enough apart, um, it shadowed too much, so I decided not to do that. Now, this time of the year with the sun higher, it might be worthwhile moving a little bit, but anyway, that, that linear, actuator, linear actuator over there has uh, actually got too much travel for, for what I've got allowed there for tilt of the panels. Uh, these are a lot higher. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna get behind these here. I can get over the top of this thing. Anyway, you can see this is a it's a bigger lineal actuator. This was the first one I bought. The price was right on it. Um, this is just a dead end thing here. This one's got a lot more. Uh, this has got 665 pounds of uh, torque, 24 volt DC, but I'm running that on 12 volt. Okay, there's another uh, another one of my trackers. This is a, a little better model in here. Okay, and then I have these uh, these scissors that I made to raise this up and down for elevation. And I do that manually by, by turning this nut here, and then I made a linkage, and it, it has to be slotted to move. And I turn that one bolt on the other end, it adjusts all three of these at the same time. I have a bungee cord on here because at one time we had really high winds and if they're up like this it actually tipped them ahead a little bit you know until this came all the way up um, I'm trying to remember if I think if that if I did something different with the this isn't necessarily threaded all the way through um, this is actually drilled out those nuts are on there but they're drilled out so that the you know the rod pulls through there and uh, that is half inch rod on these up here. The ones that I, the ones that I built down there were the first ones I built and I went with smaller rod. Um, that wasn't as good a setup. I wasn't as careful with them how I made them. The other thing you can see if you look real close on this other end I ran a conduit underneath the, uh, underneath here, to, oh, let me back up here a little bit, underneath this square tubing. This is one inch square tubing here. Um, you should bridge it and put another piece below it if you want to do it this way so it's a little more rigid. If you can see down the line here, um, see where it kind of 
bends down just a little bit from the weight. Now this is set all the way up as high as I can have it for winter. Um, what limits me is when it's tipped it would hit the roof if I go too high. Um, anyway, the sun is starting to get to the point right now where I'm going to be tipping these down. Now in the middle of summer they'd be almost, they'd be down as low as I can get them with these, with these scissors. Um, which is almost, would be the same slope as the roof. Um, I think it's supposed to be 30 degrees for the, the lowest point in the summer because I'm at, the latitude here is 44 degrees. So um, I think it's like 46 in the winter for the highest point and 30 in the summer for the lowest point. Anyway, you can go online and find that information. Now these are the uh, end phase inverters. So that wiring coming off the panel there, that's 37 volts until it goes into this end phase inverter. And then when it comes out on the other side here and plugs into this, this is called a trunk cable. Um, that's 240 volts. So that runs down the line here. And it goes through this junction box down through my roof into the attic of my garage and it goes over to another junction box down below and then I'm gonna have to get down and show you the rest where that goes from here Anyways, there we go. These two yellow wires, they're, the, they're coming from the, uh, the solar panels up above. It goes into this number 10 wire, and that goes down and goes into the ground. Comes over here. Now this is the, the way the power company wants it. You wouldn't have to do it this way except for the power company. Because I'm selling back to the power company my excess. So it comes over here goes into this disconnect and then you can see I've got two meters here this one is the solar power being generated and this is what I'm using in the house um, and then at the end of the month monthly billing you know they subtract what I use from what I made or whatever whichever way it comes out now this other disconnect here is for just these two panels up here that that feed a battery bank that I have in the house so that if the power goes off so that set up a different system these other 10 panels up on the roof those are the, the 10 270 watt LG panels and they have the end phase 250 inverters on these those are M215s on the ones on the garage so the M215 will only go up to, I think it's 230 uh, watts. The M250s will go up to 250 watts. Um, so even though I have 270 watt panels, you go like, well, you're only going to get 250 watts out of them. Well, in February and March, they would maybe hit 270, but the rest of the time of the year when it's warmer out, the panels don't actually put out 270 watts because they, the heat cuts back on what they produce. Now, they maxed out at 250 this last two months. Not every day, but a lot of days when it was cool out and the wind was blowing. So that's the reason for going with a higher wattage panel in the mini inverters because uh, when they're not producing 270, you're still getting more wattage out of them. So um, you kind of got to decide which way you want to go on that. Like I said, these other two panels that are tipped sideways there, um, those are actually homemade panels like I had on the garage that I had started out with and I'm just using them to keep the battery bank up because I'm not not really feeding off the battery bank into the into the grid you know anyway um, I said my wiring is a little bit sloppy on some of this here but I did this whole system 
You got roughly eight thousand dollars in it, not counting the part that's feeding into the battery bank. But the uh, the ten two hundred seventy watt LG panels I got with the inverters and the shipping came to around four thousand dollars, and the two thirty watt panels um, that was about four thousand or forty two hundred. Uh, because the price of the panels came down, you know, from the, from the time difference from when I ordered the 230s to the 270s, uh, the price per watt was cheaper. So it came out to like about about the same. Now, like I said, when I'm saying $8,000, I'm not counting the four panels that I made myself. So um, anyway, I, I hit 5.5 kilowatts in March, just a little over 5.5 maximum capacity out of these. Anyway, that's all the video I'm going to do on it for right now.